greatest income inequality of any state in the nation, right? We know we've got plenty of people with plenty of money. Um, the, the, the state is, is flush. Uh, many of its residents are doing very well, some exceptionally well. Obviously, the top 1% in New York City is getting about 41% of all the income uh, in New York City. When you look at New York State, the top 1% is getting up almost a third of all the income. And when you look nationally, that you know puts us well above uh, uh, the U.S. average, which is about 22%. And as you can see, over the last 30, 40 years, um, those numbers have changed, right? We know that the wealthy have been getting wealthier and income inequality has been getting far worse. It didn't always used to be this way, right? We used to have, uh, there was a time period after World War II and uh, right up about till 1980, uh, where prosperity was shared. And we had the highest marginal tax rates at the federal level and at the state level that we've had. Uh, and that money was reinvested back in people, back in services. You know, we know that the, the federal government put together the GI Bill and helped people buy homes, start businesses, get a college education. It was the greatest expansion of the middle class that we've seen. So, but now we're in the situation where, you know, we've been cutting the top tax rates from the top, both in New York State and federally. Uh, and that's meant an explosion in income inequality, right? Since 1980 and Reaganomics, supply side, trickle down, whatever we're calling it, the reality is, is that it's, it's not working for the average citizen and it's redistributing wealth, but it's redistributing it upward. Um, so we know even with the millionaire's tax, this temporary surcharge that's been in place for a while, that the top 1% uh, of, of taxpayers uh, in terms of state and local taxes pay a much smaller percentage of their income in state and local taxes than do the rest of us. Um, so your average citizen is paying about 11, 12% of their income in state and local taxes, whereas those making over $665,000 a year are paying a smaller percentage. So one of the things we need to do is reform our tax structure. I didn't get a chance to put the assembly slide in here, but I'm gonna talk about that. Uh, but what one of the, you know, there, there are basically three things going on, three possibilities right now, right? We've had the millionaire's tax in place. It's an income tax surcharge. Of, uh, the top rate is 8.82% on families making over $2 million a year. Uh, if we let that lapse, that means a $3.7 billion tax cut for those families. Don't think they need that at this point in time. Um, that's just a guess on my part, but I'm pretty sure um, that they're going to be okay if um, they don't get a $3.7 billion tax cut. Because what, quite frankly, too, the other thing to keep in mind is if the Trump tax plan goes through, those same people in the top 1% are looking at about a $20 billion tax windfall. Uh, from the federal government, right? So don't get all depressed on me, just realize. Mm -hmm. um, so we proposed uh, a, an alternative approach um, to taxation in New York State, right? Because the millionaire's tax expires the end of this year, so something has to be done. Um, so there are three, uh, three options on the table. One is expiration, which is supported by the Senate majority. Then there's um, extension, which is supported by the governor. And then there's expansion, which is supported by the New York State Assembly and um, many of the, the progressives throughout uh, the state. So we've been looking to expand it and make the income tax more progressive to balance out the overall regressivity of our state and local tax structure. So what we proposed is starting at 665 and going to above 100 million. Our top rate tops out at 9.92%. Um, you know, we also, uh, we proposed uh, taxing people between 665 and a million. Now, the assembly then came out with another version, very similar uh, and very progressive, right? So they instituted brackets at 1 million to 5 million, 5 million to 10 million, 10 million to 100 million, and above 100 million. So theirs range from 8.82% to 10.32%. So very kind of similar in nature. Their top end bracket is a little bit higher in terms of percentage. Um, but the reality is that this is more of what we need, right? This is going to generate additional revenue. So the assembly package will generate about $2 billion more than the current $3.7 billion um, that's being generated right now. So, you know, but inevitably when we start talking about raising taxes on the wealthy, what is, you know, the folks who are opposed to this, what are they going to tell you? 
everybody's gonna move, right? <laughs> they're all packing their bags oh, yeah. and they're leaving town. Um, which, yeah, I mean, it couldn't be farther from the truth, quite frankly. You know, the reality is that there, there, there's a couple of realities we need to deal with. One, half the people that are paying the millionaire's tax in New York State already live out of state. They're non-residents. They live in Connecticut, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, but they make their millions in New York. That's why they have to pay New York State income tax, right? And the other reality is there's been numerous studies that look at the migration of wealthy individuals. Who's moving, really? It's people who are in search of economic opportunity. Millionaires have found their economic opportunity, so they're content with staying where they are, and they also uh, are really enmeshed in different social and philanthropic structures in their communities as well that they want to be part of. So, you know, people aren't going to flee to Mississippi. They're not going to make their millions there. It's not going to happen, right? But the other reality is when you look at the actual numbers, right? Since this has been in place in 2010, right? The share of millionaires in New York State, millionaire tax returns has grown by one third, 33% increase since this tax has been in place. So this notion that somehow this is hurting the growth in millionaires is preposterous, right? We're still seeing a significant growth uh, in the number of millionaires across the state. So. The most significant opposition um, to this is coming from the Senate Republican majority, right? Which is odd, right? Because when you think about where are the millionaires in New York State? Well, 97% of them, 97% are in New York City, Westchester, Long Island, Rockland, and Orange. 3% remaining in the rest of upstate New York. Um, so, you know, when I talk to my Senate Republican uh, friends, you know, I, and they tell me that they want to see this tax expire, I was like, well, you know, guess where money for, for your schools is coming from, for your roads and bridges? It's coming from downstate as well. So, you know, you should probably be supporting this rather than saying, you know, it's not affecting your constituents to a large degree. It's not it's affecting yours, sadly. Uh, but, you know, Folks can handle this. It's not, it's not too much to ask. As a matter of fact, um, a little secret, and last year we released a letter from some 40 millionaires in New York State. This year we've got about 85 signed on to a letter saying, tax me more, I'm okay with this. You know, I wanna be part of the solution. I wanna make sure that we can afford to address child poverty in our state, our roads and bridges, our education system. Um, so it's not this that, that people are completely opposed to this. Quite frankly, the vast majority, uh, as Mike was pointing out, in poll after poll, support uh, higher taxes on the wealthy. Um, people just, you know, whether they know it, the facts or not, they innately know uh, that the wealthy get away with paying a smaller share of taxes than they should. Um, so we want to make sure that we're continuing to promote fair share tax policy in New York. Uh, and um, try and advance this. And one thing to keep in mind um, that's problematic is we're still operating under this 2% state spending cap, right? You've all been dealing with your 2% local property tax cap. Now to add insult to injury, the governor has been promoting and, and pushing this 2% state spending cap. It's not in statute, it's not in law. The legislature does not have to go along with it, but they do each year. Um, so we're curtailing spending. So again, it's, it's pointed out, when education aid goes up 6%, when healthcare goes up 4%, and those two expenditures make up half of our budget, right? Uh, in terms of our state operating budget, that's over 50% of our expenditures right there. Everything else under a 2% cap is gonna be forced to go down. Uh, and social welfare agencies have taken a beating. AIM payments, quite frankly, we've been looking at AIM payments over the years. Uh, right now, uh, the payment is $715 million. When AIM first started in 1980, not adjusting for inflation, the, the amount was $820 million. If we adjust that for inflation today, you know, AIM should be somewhere in the neighborhood of 2.5 to $2.6 billion a year. Um, and you know, cities, towns, and villages are getting really shortchanged. Counties are getting shortchanged. So, I mean, I think there's a lot we can be doing to have the state pick up more of the costs that they're forcing down to the local level. Um, we spend $9 billion a year on economic development programs throughout New York State. Mm -hmm. If we were to take 2.3 billion of that, we could pick up the entire local share of Medicaid. And